Members of the South African Cabin Crew Association and the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa at SAA picketed at the offices of the Department of Public Enterprises on Tuesday. The two unions say the protest is against the looming dismissals of 225 workers and the continuation of corruption and mismanagement at SAA, among other grievances. Now, NUMSA National Spokesperson Pakamile Hlubi Majola and SACA President Zazi Nsebanyoni uh, Mugambi joins us now and uh, we're going to have a conversation with the two ladies. It's great to have both of you. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Thanks, Leanne, for having us. All right, um, Pakimile, let me come to you first. So perhaps you can explain to us the, the looming dismissals of the 225 workers whom you say were on the training layoff scheme. What is the scheme all about and what, what went wrong? All right, doesn't look like Pakamili. Can I, can I, can I respond to that? Go um, for it, Sazi. Yeah. It looks like we've lost Pakamili there. Go yeah, for it, Sazi. Um, I think the training layoff scheme was a brainchild of the, um, the labor forum at the DPE, where we were trying to mitigate, um, um, you know, more retrenchments. And we put together this training layoff scheme sort of social plan compact, where the understanding was these employees are supposed to be trained, upskilled, and when SAA ramps up, they are then meant to be um, reabsorbed into various positions after they had been trained. But what has happened is that um, they were given, they were basically told that their training layoff has started last year's February. And you'd remember, SAA was not operating. SAA was not even at Airways Park. So there was no training happening there. Mm -hmm. SAA only took to the skies in September. But what SA has done, has, have, they've given them a 12-month period, but have started it in February last year. When SA was not operating, they, had not, have, they have not received any training. Um, and um, the CCMA has refused to grant um, the training layoff scheme based on the fact that SA has no financial auditor statements. And that's something that, that, that CCMA has tried to mitigate by saying, at least provide management accounts. Let's see how we can best assist. Yeah. But SA has failed to do this. And so these employees now have been told via SMS that come the end of March, they will not be, they, they, they are retrenched formally. And the worst thing about it is they're not even receiving the packages that were given to anybody else in the years of service. They have been given a package that the year of service is a year, which was from the training layoff. And that is absolutely ridiculous. And um, we marched to the DPE basically to say that the DPE must intervene, firstly, these employees were let down by not being trained. Secondly, SAA management currently is rehiring people that have just taken the voluntary sevens package just a few months ago. And to us, that's a corrupt, corrupt practice and they cannot claim critical skills. That is, that is something that we're not going to accept because most of these positions that they are filling are not of critical skills. Yeah. And our members could have easily done the short courses in, in various aviation, you know, for instance, chicken courses, um, all these various courses in order to upskill themselves. They've had a year in order to let them shadow and learn those operations, but they've done nothing and have simply waited until now to tell them, well, there's nothing we can do. Um, come end of March, um, you are dismissed. And yeah. March, that's unacceptable. No, that, uh, well, I mean, I, I can imagine being in a position like this. So, um, Pakimira, I know we lost you, uh, but I think you're back on now. Uh, I'm sure you caught the end there of, of Zaza's answer, just talking to what's actually happening there. But I, I just want to ask you, 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 you talk of workers that were promised to be absorbed into the airline on a, on a permanent basis. That was the idea. But instead, those that have taken severance packages have been recalled. I mean, this, this, what you're telling me is very, very strange. It really is. Um, are you seeing the same thing? Perhaps you can explain a little further, Pakimile. What is going on there? Well, indeed, and uh, what Zazi is saying is absolutely true. Uh, we have to, and this is why as unions, Nusa and Saka, one of the demands that we made in our memorandum was that we want full disclosure on the recruitment and selection process the HR department of SAA um, utilized in order to determine why these people should return. I think it is totally insulting for workers at SAA to be told that they do not have skills. These are workers, some of whom have worked for the airline for more than 34 years. And um, that is clear.
clearly a blatant lie. What we are seeing is a repetition of the corruption which we as unions had been complaining was a problem at SAA prior to the restructuring process. And now that we're dealing with the so-called new SAA, we are still dealing with the same problem of rampant mismanagement and corruption. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the initial um, staff layoff was at around about 3,000 people. Now we're adding these 225 members to that list as well. What kind of staff are they now hiring and re-implementing? I mean, does, this, do, 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 does it conflict with the 225 that are going? Are they looking for the same kind of skills? Um, well, uh, they're various. I mean, they're taking on all fronts at SA, from check-in staff, to um, um, refunds to many many departments here and there, um, and 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 the argument that we have and SAA must not be shallow in their thinking. And they, I mean, the argument that we have is these people had a year or, or, or where they needed to be upskilled. And these courses we talk about, Leanne, are short courses. They courses that run over about six months, three months here, two months there. And they could have used that period in order to upskill them and put them in those positions. They're not critical skills per se, but they have not done that. And the, uh, the 3,000 people that left, I mean, SAA, at the time when they were offering voluntary severance packages, could have done a skills audit and mm. said, we need to retain these particular skills. These are the skills that we can do away with so that when we start, we at least meet the critical skills and the minimum criteria of an airline. Um, so that's not an excuse. The airline started with the regulated skills that are needed. The skills that, they are absor that they, they, they're getting from the VSP can be done by these group of employees. And we saw a, a statement from SAA saying, oh, how can a cabin crew member um, uh, now go, go, go do something else? I mean, how shallow? Cabin crew members are not uh, just people that sat there for years, did not get educated, not upskill themselves. Cabin crew members have many qualifications. And SAA has just not taken the time to actually explore that and have failed um, what they promised these individuals by upskilling and training so that they can yeah. be reabsorbed. Yeah. And they've taken the lazy approach. Yeah. Uh, um, SAA has been chastised by Scopa for, for failing to actually even present its financial statements since 2017-2018 financial year. I mean, this is three years without financial accountability. What do unions understand about the airline's financials? Uh, Pakimela, I don't know if you want to jump in there. Well, um, and you know, you're raising a very good point, Leanne. Uh, this is an issue that uh, Numta and Saka has raised repeatedly, directly with DPE and even in the media. The fact that it is absolutely disgraceful that SAA um, has been let off the hook when it comes to actually accounting to Parliament about its finances. How are we expected to believe that the looting has stopped. What evidence is there to demonstrate that there is actual proper financial management when this airline hasn't produced a single, uh, hasn't produced any financial statement since the 2017-2018 uh, uh, financial period? And um, we believe that on this front, Parliament and Scopa in particular has actually been failing in its duties to hold Minister Pravin Goldan to account for in to ensure that SAA is actually uh, operating properly. This is again another example of the mismanagement uh, that we are that we are raising. There is absolutely no way you can convince us that there is no corruption when you haven't produced financial statements. Part of the reason why training layoffs couldn't even occur uh, with the CCMA um, is because uh, SAA wasn't able to produce financial statements. Had they been able to do that, the CCMA would have been the one that was pay would have been paying workers' salaries for that period while they were training. But because, again, on, there's a real failure of management and leadership at the airline, workers are suffering because of decisions that are being taken at the highest level. Yeah. Zazi, has Parliament addressed matters of SAA in regard to retrenchments and other challenges that are, are still resurfacing and these, these, these allegations and the, the talk of corruption that is going on there in maladministration? No, I mean, um, not to us, Leah, and I think the last we heard was in Scopa when um, the DPE was given an account of what's happening and explain the, explaining the retrenchment, etc. So, no, they haven't addressed, 
and 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 funny enough, Leanne, I mean, even the Zondo the Zondo uh, state capture report doesn't go deep enough for us. I mean, we have we have piles and piles of audited um, 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 forensic reports that bring us so many people at SAA. Some of which are still in the airline. Some of, of of which are still making decisions, like we see today. And we honestly believe Parliament should take a harder line. And I mean, the unemployment rate in in South Africa is sitting at about 30, 30 something on the high end, fifty for those that are actively uh, not looking for employment. So people don't want to be unemployed, and and they they want to keep these jobs. And and Parliament should intervene. And we are available for them to, to to speak to us. We'll explain to them. We'll point them in the right direction as to who they should be looking at. They should be asking clear questions about Takato. We have no idea what is happening with that particular deal. It is sitting, it's floating, it's been through a due diligence that is never ending. And every day that passes, our members are suffering at the hands of the same people that we had hoped by now would have left SAA and we would have received fresh blood that understands how to deal with labor and understands how to collaborate and find common solutions. But what we're finding is a very militant um, interim executive, we have a CEO that refuses to speak to unions, that has blatantly said he will talk directly to employees, and he is creating an unstable labor uh, uh, force at SAA. Um, so nothing is going well at SAA. Parliament must intervene. Takato must, 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 uh, uh, the, the deal, we need answers. Yeah, and that Tecato deal is a, is, a, is a conversation all by itself because, I mean, this has been going on for eight months now and there's always this talk that uh, the negotiations are in an advanced stage and yet nothing comes of it and it seems something has gone wrong there. Uh, uh, you've been saying that there's been no openness. These are the unions, I take it both of you, are saying that there's been no openness on this Tecato deal. What is your greatest concern about this deal as it is presumed that this was brought in to, to save and resolve SAA's financial problems. It seems to be making it worse, though. Well, I think, Leanne, your points are very well made because these are precisely issues that we demand answers for. Uh, right now, Nunsa and Saka have actually lodged a dispute. We're going through a private arbitration process in order to get answers from the Department of Public Enterprises on the details relating to the Takato deal. And we think it is quite disgraceful that unions, Nunsa and Saka, should have to resort to legal action to get information about a state-owned company. Um, it, how does the South African government justify the sale of an entire SOE, and yet we have absolutely no detail on the deal. We know nothing about how DPE arrived at the decision to choose Takato out of all consortiums. We know nothing about who were the other uh, possible bridges uh, for this deal, what were they bringing to the table, what are the requirements. This is not a privately owned company. Mm. This is a company that's owned by the public. And it, it really uh, uh, speaks to the shocking levels of the lack of transparency, the lack of honesty on the side of the department and this government in engaging its constituency, which is the public, on the, the, the state of SOE. We are constantly told about how this is a new administration, this is a new dawn, they're cleaning up, they're dealing with corruption. But if indeed you are being honest about uh, cleaning up and about uh, dealing with corruption, then as, as, as the saying goes, if you have nothing to hide, then hide nothing. Mm -hmm. We should not have to go to court to get uh, information about the deal. DPE should just uh, disclose to the public in full about the, the full details of the deal, what is going on, and what the terms and conditions are. Yeah, and, and, and one had to always look at this deal and, and ask a lot of questions. And a lot of questions were asked. I mean, you know, the company, Takatsu Consortium, uh, launching their airline Lyft, then Mango suddenly disappears off the radar. An airline that was actually doing very, very well. I mean, against all odds, SAA would be struggling, but Mango always seemed to, to come forward and and. and produce those results. Now, Mango is no longer. SAA is nowhere any close to seeing the glory days that it used to be. I mean, it just looks further and further away as long as this deal doesn't go through because this is where jobs go in there. I mean, it just just in terms of that, I mean, I just want to wrap up the conversation with, with, with regards to Takatsu and this. Zazi, I mean, 
the question marks around this deal. There's just far too many and no answers seem to be coming. Does anybody want to be honest about this? No. I mean, it's apparent that no. You, I mean, the issue of mango for me is so painful. I mean, you have people that have taken um, voluntary severance packages and now the business rescue practitioner is basically saying we are getting rid of everyone until we find a strategic equity partner. And meanwhile, Lyft is soaring high, increasing their schedules, and Mango has been left to die. So we are hoping the business rescue practitioner takes a firm stance and gets a suitable SEP. But with the Takato deal, it really, really leaves such a bitter taste in our mouths because we don't know what the deal is. We don't know um, if this three, this, uh, the, 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 the committed funding that's supposed to come, when it's going to come. It actually looks to us that SAA was bought for RAND, um, and these people do not have money to, to put into SAA. So we're in very big trouble. And SAA management, as it stands, is not collaborating. They're not engaging. Um, and we have said this is, this is key, key to us. So the DPE, mm-hmm in this regard, has to intervene. And we've asked them. And the, 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 the DG has said he will intervene and try and help these training layoff people, which have gone from 1,000, mind you, Leanne, to 222. It shouldn't be so difficult to assist and engage with TITA and NSFAS. These people are sitting in these high positions, and I'm sure they can engage each other in order to find solutions. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we've, we've given up on the management. I think we, we, we're now asking for the DPE to intervene, and we'll see whether that yields any results. All right. Um, ladies, uh, wrapping it up, did the department promise some form of resolution or reply? Um, have they been in contact with you after you handed in this memorandum of demands? Anything from them as yet? Yes, Leanne, could- I think um, that the, the, the DG had indicated that he will respond after, of course, we needed stricter timelines because we have people that are, 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 are set to exit come end of the month. He has promised to respond within the sev- within seven to ten days. And, um, I mean, if that's not forthcoming, it'd be highly disappointing because this was something that we put together collectively and they should come in and, and see how they can intervene. If not, in the end, we will be going back to DPE and demand these answers yeah. because it's simply not good enough. It's not good enough to make people promises and let them down and leave them just to fend for themselves. It's, it's extremely painful for our members. Ladies, we leave it there. Um, Sanka President Zazi uh, Nsamanyoni Mugambi and NUMSA National Spokesperson Pakimile Hlubi Majola discussing the ongoing troubled relations between the management and workers at SAA and all the question marks that are still hanging over the Takatsu deal, which uh, details of are just still eluding us. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that, that, that wraps up that particular interview.